everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this twisted easel card. So this is how it looks when you take it out of the envelope and then you have this piece that folds and it will just kind of twist around and sit behind the stopper at the front there. It's a really nice style card. I've made the twisted easel before. I'll link up here that tutorial if you want a bit more inspiration. And uh, yeah, it just it's very easy to do. It's a simple six by six, you know, open and close card, you know, a side folding card. But by just adding this diagonal score line, you create this effect here. And um, yeah, it just gives a really, really nice look. And then inside you have lots of room to write your message. You could, if you want, have white paper here and have your message um, there instead. Or alternatively, you could put it on the back, which is, I think, what I might have done on the other tutorial that's up there. So yeah, really, really nice to do. Six by six, all folds nice and flat to fit in an envelope. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so I've used a few bits and pieces for this card, but I've used my two and a half scallop circle punch. I've used my two inch circle punch, just the plain one, and then I've also used the one and a half scallop one. These scallop ones are from Dress My Craft. So again, everything will be linked below. I've used my trusty Posca pen just to add a little bit of detail. And then I'm using my Bright Rosa kit for this one. So I hadn't, you know, gone, actually like used it because Christmas just overtook everything. So it's been really nice to sit down and do some crafting with this, with this kit. So the Bright Rosa one, one is floral and very very pretty so this is the die set that I used for the card that I just showed you here so for those of you that have the kit I've used that lovely kind of center like detail as the topper here and then these squares this one are all using the dies here you can see where I've cut the silver using that that decorative edged one there these are some of the sentiment toppers and then there's all the different circled punches that I've used to create that stopper. So that's the one I've used for this one. But then I thought of the other Bright Rosa dies that I have and um, the sunflower one. And I thought that would look really nice as like the topper piece. So I used this paper, this one here, which is the one that I've already prepared. Um, and I also used the some of these embellishments on that other one. Actually, if you look a bit closer, I don't know how well can you see on all of the edges all the little you know bits there I've just used the smallest of those rhinestones it looks really really pretty so that's what I used for that card and then um, I'm using the happy birthday so that's a thank you card because I needed one but then I've taken out the happy birthday here is going to be the stopper or topper depending on where you want to put it for the card that I'm going to show you today also all my scraps are in there as well um, because I like to keep them within my you know each kit so I know where I am Okay, so first of all, you want a six by six card blank. So I've got mine here. And then all you want to do is within the left hand square is pop it into your scoreboard, find the center, right? And just keep your stylus in the track, bring this piece in. So it's the top left, okay? Within this left hand square, you wanna sit at the six inches and then that score line your center score line here you want to also be within that track so it sits right within that six inches like so and then you just want to score okay and um, it might be worthwhile flipping it over and just relining that as well and scoring again I always put my stylus in bring it down keep it in the track and then lie this down you can follow the track of the stylus so you know the bottom point here is nice and straight but just go over that and score again just so you get your folds in the right direction okay so again you should have all that folding on the left hand side and then you're just going to fold that up just need to make mine a bit straighter there don't know why there we go and just crease that use your bone folder as well i'd already done mine before but now you'll see you get that kind of tent effect but it also will fold flat to fit in the envelope but that's the piece that's going to come up Okay, so that's all of the scoring needed just for that. If it's already a pre-made card blank, then you're just going to need your score board just for that um, score line there. So this is the die. This is the Sunflower Band die by Break Rosa. And I did do um, a few um, samples when they launched it, but I haven't actually used it for a tutorial yet. I do have another card, but I, I've kind of changed it a bit and I do, so it's kind of there, but I do need to do the video for that one. But I've got, I do have like, I think it's gonna work out. I'm just still playing around with it because I did change it, but it's beautiful. This is the big band. I've got a few of her band ones and they are lovely, but I'm using 
this smaller one in here. So I've just die cut that one, that one and that one. And um, it's given me these pieces here. And then I've also used the circle, it's not circle, but just the inner detail, that one there as well. And um, yeah, all I'm gonna do is just shape it a little bit. Always nice to give any kind of flowers just a little bit of dimension. So I always just flip them over and then I've just got this bone, um, this kind of style, uh, no, Bulbarian, there's plastic ones. They're just, a lot of them are for cake decorating. And I just go under each petal and just kind of shape it. It will start to curl up. Um, and once you kind of do that and then flip it over, it just gives a really nice effect. And you can just stress them as well. And that always adds a little bit of, you know, more depth to them. But now when I flip that over, oh, I didn't do that one there. Like so, and you push it down, you just get a bit more, you can see the difference. Oh, <laughs> stuck there. Between the two, that looks a lot nicer. And because where it's creased, it gives it, a, again, just a little bit more detail. And if you add your inks to that, it will pick that up even more. So I'm just gonna quickly flip this one over and do the same. Okay, and I've also just done that piece there as well, just to give it a little bit more shape. So I'm gonna turn those two over. And then I'm just going to use some of my glue and just stick one over the top. Just kind of, you want to offset the top one just so it kind of overlaps like so. So you create one big full flower. You don't have to, you can have one. You can also do two different colours as well. You know, flowers are not perfect. They can be anything you want to be. But now, again, what I might do is, yeah, just kind of give that a little bit of shape in the middle there like so and then I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on the back of that one stick that one down and I've just put a bit of foam adhesive on the back of that one I'm just going to stick that over the top and then I've got this white one here which again that one's going to be too big I just cut that down again and then I am going to use these ones here from my own stash just because they were really big I wanted something to fill all of that kind of um, centre part. So I'm just again I'm going to pop a little bit of glue and just pop that in the centre. Okay so that is my kind of flower all ready to go. It looks really really nice. I'm going to leave that to one side and we can get back to the card. Okay so quite a lot of mats and layers on this one. Again it's completely you know optional. You don't have to have it like that at all but I did like it. So what I've got here is I've got this white piece. So open up the card, ignore all that for the minute. We're just going to concentrate on this right hand side. So I've got this one here. So it's six by six, this square. So this piece here, you'll want it to be five and seven eighths of an inch squared. So it's just got that very small border, okay? Then I have this piece here, which I've used the die from the kit to cut out but obviously not everybody will have that. So you'll then want something that is, well, this is five and a half. Okay, you'll see that sits in there nicely. And then this pattern piece was cut with one of the squares from the kit, and then I've got this white piece as well. But the white is just over five by five, and the pattern piece is four and seven eighths of an inch squared. So it just gives you a rough idea of what I've done because I've been working with those dies within the kit. But you'll see now when I sit them all over the top, on top of each other they look really nice so that's where those are going to go then on the front you want to cut a piece of cardstock that's five and a half by five and a half okay and then you're going to oh well caught then you're just going to cut this one in half on the diagonal so i'm just going to line up those points make sure they're bang on and just cut that one in half Oh, I'll need that again in a second. You actually want two pieces that size because I just remembered I also went ahead and stamped my sentiment on the inside. So the other half is on that other card. So you want two pieces of that size, cut them both in half on the diagonal and keep what you know one of them for the inside. So these now will go perfectly within the two kind of triangle sections on the front. Okay, then I went ahead and cut this one again, which was five and a half. And again, on the diagonal, you just want to cut that in half again. And then I did take a little bit more off. Now the reason 
I had to take more off this piece is because I didn't want to lose this side, this detail. So if I go to lay these on top of here now, you'll see they just don't, they just cover it, they just look silly. So what I've done is sit this on here, but focus on these two corners, these two sides here and bring it up like so. And you want, I guess about one eighth of an inch kind of border, something like that. I'm going from the very outer side, not those kind of little arches. But then you just want to put a little marker here and then trim off that. That way you don't lose the detail on the, the sides, you're just losing that straight edge. So I'm just going to line this up in my trimmer. And cut that away. I'll do the other one in a second, but now that sits perfectly and you've got a nice border and that's obviously going to go on the top like so. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same with this one here. I'm going to line this one up over the top. This is only if you're using this pattern piece or any pattern piece really, you'd need to do it that way um, because obviously it's a die cut so it's already, you know, the size is set. But otherwise, if you're just cutting this plane from mirrored cardstock, you just do this one, then you'll want it to be a piece of um, four and seven eighths of an inch squared. Okay, and then just cut it on the diagonal. So I've only had to do that just because it was that die that I'd used. But now that one's going to go there, and that one's going to go there. Okay. And then we've got this piece here, which is going to be for the flower to sit in the centre of, and that's going to be the main feature on the front of the card. So the white piece here is four and one eighth of an inch squared, and then that lime colour is three and seven eighths of an inch squared. So again, they're odd sizes because I'm using the dies from that kit. But you just want to look at your square dies and anything that's close. So if your lime, in my case here, it's three and seven eighths. If yours is four by four, that's fine. You know, and then just cut your mats and layers. If you're doing them freehand, then you can follow my sizes exact. But just work with what you have. It's very easy to adapt. So I'm now going to go and stick all of these pieces down. So the front ones and those mats and layers that I showed you just now inside. So everything's now stuck down. I've also gone and stuck that piece there and now that can come up like so. So now I would now do your stopper. So I've just gone and popped some foam adhesive on the back of mine. You can see there just all the dimension on mine, but I like that. You don't have to, you can just stick them all down. But what you want to do now is bring this piece up and it's up to you really where you want it. Um, I'm going to have mine similar to the one before, so it's about there and then that will just stop itself there. If it's bouncy, mine's a little bit of a bounce to it, just take your bone folder, because I didn't actually burnish this properly, and just go along and just burnish that score line. You see now how flat it is, and then it will now be really flat with that, which is much better. Then just close up your card, and you want this piece, and you're gonna line up your, well, the top right and the bottom left with the that, diagonal score line like so and then also make sure you've got even kind of you know border here but you're only sticking this side so what I would say to do is flip this over um, like so make sure it's all lined up yeah I think that's about right and then oh, and put a pencil mark there and there and now, I mean, if you've got directional paper, you're going to have to make sure when you flip it over that you're working on the right piece. So I need mine to be, yeah. So I'm going to add glue now to this calf. Don't go right up to the pencil line. Leave about one eighth of an inch, you know, a few millimetres, just so that it doesn't, like any glue doesn't ooze out. But you can now stick that half. Again, line up those points onto that score line. And just stick that all down. Again, just make sure that this is nice and straight. And again, this kind of corner here is as well. Just let that kind of do its thing for a minute. Okay, so while that's just setting, I'm then going to bring in my flower. And I'm also going to add 
a foam pad to the back of this. You can use some hot glue, just normal glue, but you want something that's strong. And then that one there is just going to stick perfectly in the centre, like so. And then also, another thing I forgot, is my Posca pen. So this is just a white paint pen, so it's just a, a white paint in there. I'm not sure what kind of paint it is, but you do need to make sure you give them a good shake when you ever, you know, whenever you go to fast use this. And although this is already a stitched die piece, I did like you to be able to see the stitching. Can you see there that white? I just really love it. It's, like I said in one of my videos when I've done it already, I'm kind of on a bit of a thing with this Posca pen at the moment. I'm using it so much and uh, it's brilliant. But I'm just going around again, just kind of following the, the stitch marks that's already there, but I'm kind of doing a double stitch. If you haven't shaken the pen enough, you'll find it fades, it just disappears. You can go over it again, but do, you have to really give it a good shake. There's a, a little like barbarian inside just to mix everything up because over time it will just kind of settle and, and split. So I can probably give mine a bit more of a shake, but I'm just gonna finish this off. Okay, if I just bring it up, you can see now the difference that that makes. And I think I also, yeah, I done it on the um, topper, just around the lime colour there and I'd already gone and done it on the pink one there but there is the card all finished. There are my two twisted easel cards really easy to make and um, it's just a nice if you're starting out with your fun fold cards and you've just been doing you know your standard top folding and side folding a twisted easel one's a nice kind of step into that fun fold card um, kind of area really because it's just that simple score line yet it creates such a I think eye-catching card you can imagine when that's you know displayed on someone's mantle side table it's going to look really really nice so I'm really pleased with how these come out love the colours it's really nice to be working with you know new product and I hope you enjoy them so thank you for watching today as always all of the links to everything that I've used will be shared below and over on my blog please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more tutorials and I'll be back again very soon bye